All right, buddy, Steve the Car Guy. So what we're doing today is we got a 2008 Chevrolet HHR, and I'm going to replace the rear shock. On this car, it's just two bolts. You got a 19 on top. You got a 21 on the bottom. The only thing that makes it a little difficult when you take these two out is this is the suspension here, right? This is the this is the beam suspension. Even though it's a beam suspension, fairly unsophisticated suspension. It's not independent or anything, but it still does rotate over here when it hooks into the frame part. You have that bolt right there with a bushing. So when we take this shock out, we're gonna be relieving that pressure and this is gonna wind up dipping a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead here and we have our Duralast. We got this over here at AutoZone and this is the brand new one. So you notice the tube, the fatter part of the tube, you see it's gonna go on top and then the bottom part's gonna go there. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna take this shock off and then the suspension is gonna drop just a little bit and then we're gonna put this one on top and you're gonna notice that when we go to put the bolt in the bottom one, we're probably about two millimeters off. And then I'll wind up taking the jack out of here and putting it and putting it underneath the suspension. You can see where I'm putting my hand right here. That that's your it's sort of a control arm, I guess, but it's a beam. It holds all one piece instead of independent. And we'll wind up jacking this up probably about two millimeters until the bolt lines up, and then we'll put it back and then we're done. The main thing we do with that people is right now I have a jack. I've got a jack stand, I've got a jack stand over the beam, and I've got a tire underneath the beam. Always want to make sure you have that. You don't want to say, oh, okay, I got a jack and a jack stand, and then you take this jack to put it here, and then somehow this jack stand fails, or where you put it is rusty or something, and the whole car comes crashing down. So even, even once I replace this, take this jack out of here, we'll still have three points of contact um, to go ahead and do that. So we'll get started. So the first thing is a 19 millimeter. We go top. I usually don't take it quite all the way out. That'll be good. Let's see a little more. Okay, then we can spin it out of here. We need to. Now we switch to the other one. And where's that 21 at? Ah, there it is. My assistant's got that. So you see this 21 down here, guys? It's a little bit of a tight because you got a drum brake here. I don't know if you guys saw that. See how the suspension it dipped down. Yeah, there you go. See how the whole suspension went down, guys? Yeah, the spring is still good, but now the suspension dropped. So now we go to put the new shock in there, it's not going to have enough. So we're going to have to wind up jacking this thing up here a little bit. That is actually pretty loose, but it's hooked in here and here. So that's what happened. That's how the shocks support your car, right, people? So there you saw it, how it all dipped down. Imagine trying to do that with independent suspension like I did on our Grand Am. It's got four points, sorry, three points of contact. It's got one here, one here, and one there. It's totally independent. you got to jack all three at the same. Oh, man, that was a pain. But this one here, relatively simple suspension, simple and cheap. Not necessarily super effective at doing race car things but uh, so there we go so that's the old shop now again like I said this part is easy then we're just gonna have to wind up moving the jack and jacking the bottom of it up so that's one same bolt goes on top right all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna screw it in so it's finger tight you know, you just put it in finger tight so that makes sure everything's lined up. If you don't put it in all the way, then when you go to put the bottom one, all of a sudden the top one's crooked and you mess it. Now, if you guys, can you guys see that down here? You can see how we're off? We're off by probably about three or four millimeters right here. See how it went ahead and it dropped down, right? So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to jack up the suspension. So we'll get this old shock out of the way. And then we go over here, jack the car down ever so slowly. I got all my jack stands. I got everything here and hopefully everything's going to work. Car's not going to be crumbling down. Car's a little bit old, a little bit rusty, a little bit craggly. Let me go over here. Lower this. Watch out for the fingers on the jack. Get it underneath there. I think I'm pretty much in the middle. All right, all right. So I'm going to jack that up and just enough so that way the bolt is going to line up. So let's see where we're at with this bolt. Yeah, we're going to go up a little bit higher. So one. Tiny little bit, let's see. Um, actually, we're a little bit lower, so let's lower that. Let's see. Okay, there we go. So, actually, I'm not even holding it up with the jack at this point. So there we go. So okay, so now we just needed to line it up just a tiny little bit. So now we got the 21. But now we have to do, guys, is we have to tighten it up. And my gun is a little messed up, and we have to use our reverse tool to go ahead and do that. So let me tighten up the gun, and we'll be right back. Right, guys so now we just you know insulation is the reverse of removal right so we got the gun set going prop okay we got that down on there usually what i do is i try to find my other socket where is it i know what the hell i was doing there it is 
I don't fully tighten one before I fully, you know, I kind of go back and forth a couple of times, make sure it's even. Now this one up here will kind of spin a little bit because this is a 650 pounds of torque right here. So when you do it, it, it kind of makes it more than what it needs. So that's pretty tight. We'll double check it again. So if you don't see it spinning a little bit, it's still going to be okay. And then what we'll do is, so guys, we'll take the breaker bar and we'll go ahead and manually just double check it there. So then we go back to the 21 on the bottom. Yep, not going anywhere, nice and tight. It's touching and you go back here and you feel your finger right there and it's good and then you see where the bushing. So that's it guys, that's really pretty much it. Then the only other thing I'll do with the one on top, I'll just take my breaker bar, the 19, go on here, here. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. We're totally golden and we don't even need to check the bottom one because we already know it wasn't spinning at all. And that's it guys, that's it. putting a shock on a GM 2008 HHR could probably fit a lot of different cars with this beam suspension. It's very simple because you had an independent suspension. You'd have another, you'd have trailing arms. You'd have one, two going over here and the third, we'd have three points of contact. But in this place, this case, it's just one pretty simple because we got these shocks in 2017 and the car's been riding rough for a couple of years. So it's under warranty with AutoZone. So you swap them out and hopefully the ride rides good. And um, then obviously all you guys do guys is put the, uh, put the tire back on. Uh, pretty simple job. I think about 20 minutes per side, maybe an hour total from start to finish. Thanks for watching.